Happy Mother's Day to all of you actual real mothers who stayed home and raised your children instead of pawning them off on daycare and government schools and fucking babysitters and shit like that. You know, feminists like to talk about... Oh, God. The title of today's episode is If I Were a Feminist. Feminist. And today, I'm calm. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff in the context. This might be a long one. Go get a drink. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff, and it's all going to come back to the context of femistatism. And I'm, I'm calm today. I'm very calm, and I expect to stay calm. I'm not going to be screaming and ranting and raving, as I often do, which I enjoy doing. I enjoy the fuck out of it. For those of you new to the show, if you failed to go to the website, cynlibsoc.com on the interwebs, and... listen to the introductory episode, let me tell you, since you wouldn't know this, and remind those of you who know it, that I do this podcast for my own personal amusement. And lately, I feel like I've been doing more incoherent ranting, emphasis on the incoherent part, than actual dissemination of philosophical thought. So I'm mulling things over in my mind, what I want to do about that. Now, of course, if I were a feminist, I would blame the patriarchy. But I'm not a feminist statist. I have to take responsibility for what I do. It must be so wonderful to be a femistatist and to have no responsibility for things that happen to you, even when those things are a direct reaction to your own actions. And today, I'm going to be making an effort to make sure I am very clear in my language. For example, I am going to say femistatist when I mean femistatist, and I'm going to say woman when I mean all women. Femistatist like to make this argument about how providing for the children is so important and yet when they become mothers they want to outsource the raising and the care of the child to other people. Often those people are minimum wage employees. Those people are high school students or God help us, even junior high students. And if raising children is such an important task, is it really the sort of thing you want to be outsourcing to people who don't have as much interest because who on the planet Earth, and we know the answer, the answer is the state. Who on the planet Earth, other than the child's mother, has more of an interest in seeing the child be successful? Only the mother. Now, if I ask the question, because I said the answer was the state, that's actually not true for that question. The question for which the answer is the state would be, who out of everyone in the world has the most interest in controlling the child's environment and education as the child grows up? 
The answer should be the mother, but the answer is in fact the state. Because as we know, if you get to the children when they're too young to know better, you can raise them to believe anything. I give you the millennials. Look at them. They've been told from day one that they're entitled, that they are special snowflakes, that they are princesses and prince, princes, that they don't have to work for a living, that they are the smartest generation ever, they're the future of America, and look, look at how worthless they are. If you're listening to this podcast, you know as well as I do that femistatism abhors nothing. <laughs> I said whores. <laughs> femistatist and whores. Oh. Femistatist abhor nothing more so than the nuclear family. The idea of a woman raising children while the man makes money so the woman can raise children. It's anathema to them. And I'm not saying everybody should have to get married to a person of the opposite gender and the man go to work and the woman stay home and they raise children. What I am saying is that women who choose to attempt raising children without a man as their husband are fucking their children up. But we know this. This is not new information. It's Mother's Day. Somebody outside is running a fucking weed eater and somebody else is blowing off fireworks. What if you people went and spent some time with your fucking mothers or something? Now, some of you would say, great one, why aren't you hanging out with your mother? Well, because my mother is a fucking femistatist, even though she doesn't know it. She sent me some recent political rants via email. It's fucking hilarious. Just, I think she has, I don't know if she actually is this stupid or if she just has dementia. But if I were a feminist statist, I would blame it on the patriarchy. This morning, I got up, made a pot of coffee like I always do. Almost always, unless I go biking or trail running first thing in the morning. Which I didn't do because today is Mother Day, Mother's Day and it snowed last night because global warming. Later on, I was walking around downtown today which we'll get to that part of the story. And I overheard somebody mentioning to somebody else that last year on Mother's Day, it actually snowed a foot of snow. I don't remember that, but that doesn't mean it's not true. This person might have a better memory than me. And I thought, hmm, global warming. Of course, if I were a femistatist, I would just blame it on the patriarchy. So I had my cup of coffee in my hand. I'm sitting there at the computer, taking a look at some stuff, downloading some automated backups that have been generated, just checking the email. And I thought I smelled something burning. I thought, man, nah, it, it must, it's just the coffee or 
I'm on my first cup of coffee. My senses aren't active yet. I, I am. Fuck. It's, it, there's nothing burning. That's ridiculous. Sitting there using the computer. And all of a sudden, the computer just shuts off. Just like you pulled the electric plug out of the wall. Pew. Of course, I'm on a battery backup, so I knew it wasn't the power going out. So I'm like, what the fuck? And I turn and I look at the computer case, thinking, what the fuck? And I see the smoke coming out of it. Now, I know some stuff about electronics. See, I have a degree in electronics. I worked in the electronics field for many years. And electronic devices, IC chips, CPUs, capacitors, resistors, inductors, all of these things, they work on the principle of smoke. For example, inside of a capacitor is a bunch of compressed smoke. And that's what makes the capacitor capacitor. Inside a resistor, you've got compressed smoke. And the more smoke you compress into it, the more the resistor will resist. Then with your IC chips, what you've got in there is a bunch of smoke. And it's compressed in there and formed into patterns. And that's what allows the IC chips to IC. So the smoke came out of the computer. The smoke comes out of electronic devices, they don't work anymore. And people will say that, oh, you, that's stupid, you know what you're talking about. Trust me, try it. Try it. Get an electronic device and do something to it, you know, short it out or put it underwater, whatever, and make the smoke come out of the device and see if it still works. I guarantee you it will not. Needless to say, I was not happy about this. Because I had shit to do today. And unfortunately, it involved the computer. I have other computers available to me, but that's my main production computer. It has all of my big important files, got all the software, yada, yada, yada. Now, if I were a femistatist, I would have, of course, blamed this on the patriarchy. But you see, as an anarcho-capitalist, I don't have the luxury of blaming the patriarchy for my problems. As an anarcho-capitalist, I have come to recognize what all of those of us who are anarcho-capitalists have come to recognize. The fact that we are responsible for what happens to us we can choose how we respond. And we have to accept that other people exist. And we have to live with them. We don't have to. We can go be hermits. But what we can't do, and what the femistatists want to do, is to control other people. The reason the femistatists need to control other people is because they cannot coexist with other people. Now, we'll get to more of that in the future. Let's go back to the story. I was in a funk. Not the good kind of funk, not a P-funk, not Funkadelic or Parliament.
And I basically just sort of wandered around the house for like two hours, basically doing nothing, completely unable to mentally and emotionally cope with, okay, the computer is out of action until I go to the computer store tomorrow, see if they've got a power supply. If they don't have a power supply, I got to order one online, wait for it to show up. And then of course, I don't think it damaged the motherboard, but I have no way of knowing until I actually fire the system up. The hard drives should be safe. The data on them should be fine, as far as I know. I don't think, I don't think there was any kind of a power spike. I just fucking hope not. If there was a power spike, we could have problems. I mean, we'll find out when I get a new system and fire it up. Though actually, I could. I mean, it's not worth it. It's I could pull the drives out and test them, but it's just, I mean, it is what it is at this point, and there's no point in futzing with it. So finally, after just waffling back and forth with myself, being unable to respond to this incident in a productive way, put on my clothes, left the house, just went out, walked around for a while, looked at girls, had a beer, talked to a couple of people, saw some people, went to one of the bars I regularly go to, the bartender there was one of the girls that I know, we chatted a little bit, and the other two waitresses were working, they were very friendly today, so we chit-chatted around a little. Came home, still kind of in a funk. Just couldn't get any productivity going. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, this is pathetic how emotionally attached I am to this fucking computer. And this is something I talked about when I did the podcast about the book The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. He talks about you know, how the internet makes us dumber, how we become so attached to the internet, the way from the yada, 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 go listen to the podcast if you want to hear the long story. Now, if I were a femistatist, I would not have had the self-awareness to step back and observe myself and to recognize that my emotional response to the fact that my computer melted down was way out of proportion. I actually have a whole lot of things I can be doing I don't need a computer for. Life will fucking go on if you don't have a computer. I know the millennials don't believe that, but it will. Without a computer, life will fucking continue. And let me just mention, if you're listening to this, I'm recording it on Mother's Day. It's not going out on Mother's Day. So it'll actually not be going out until a week after Mother's Day because I already have episodes. Thankfully, the computer went down and I do a lot of the posting from the house, not from this uh, studio. And I don't, I'm, Randy and I are not going to have time to record at the studio this upcoming week, probably. It might happen, but it might not. We don't know. We, we make this shit up as we go along. You're shocked, right? You thought this was all planned. <laughs> oh, you fool. As an anarcho-capitalist, I have the self-awareness to step back and take a look at myself. And I saw my emotional response. That's all it is. It's an emotional response to an event that happened that was mostly beyond my control. Had I been paying attention to the smell of smoke, I could have possibly powered down the computer before the power supply failed. 
and thus not had my, you know, because now my file system, the things were happening when the computer just died. So for those of you who know anything about file systems and I was in Linux, it should recover okay, but you know, still you can just damage a file system by doing stupid shit like that. I could have powered the computer down correctly and wouldn't have to worry about the possibility of a power spike and wouldn't have to worry about the possibility of file corruption. But this thing happened. And as we go through life, things happen. And that terrifies the fuck out of femistatist. That is why they are femistatist. The femistatist is a person who is terrified at the thought of being uncomfortable. After mulling around a little bit more in my pathetic little fucking funk and eating some din din, which reminds me I'm actually getting hungry again. I made a choice. I chose to remove my head from my ass. I made a choice to get over it. I made a choice to move beyond my emotional response to something that happened which was beyond my control and which happens all the time all around the world. I made the choice to move on with my life and get productive shit done. And because I understand how my mind works, because I have self-awareness, because I understand how people work in general, because I have interpersonal skills, I have communication skills, I have understanding of, I, what, would, what do you call it? Is it psychiatry? Is it psychology? Because I have understanding of humans in general and specific. Something interestingly that femistatists don't have. This ties into, as I've discussed before, just recently, femistatists go on and on and on about how women have such superior communication skills. And yet, as we've seen time and time again, femistatists are not capable of communicating or being communicated with. Right, I give you the dumb bitch at Reddit who said nobody can negotiate for salaries anymore because we men are better at negotiating for salaries than women. And I've done this in a lengthier version in another podcast. But as I pointed out, men negotiate for salaries and femistatists claim anything a man can do, a woman can do better. Femistatists also claim that women have great communication skills. Since negotiating for a salary raise, increase, starting salary, whatever it may be. Number one, that is something a man does. Number two, it involves communication. Therefore, women, according to the femistatist train of thought, in so much as femistatists can think, women should thus be able to negotiate for raises and starting salaries far better than men. Because anything a man can do, a woman can do better, and women have such fantastic communication skills. So I got out the timer and I gave myself one hour because I had a task that needed to be done and I put on some good music, some of the music I typically run to. Okay, and I poured a shot, ga shot glass full of blended scotch. Oh, which I just took another drink of. I'm on the second shot glass of blended scotch. Ooh, that one kind of hit hard. And 
And yeah, as W. Bush would say, mission accomplished. I got the task done and started a little bit into the next task. Then, when that hour was up, that's what the timer is for, because I understand that what, if I have a time limit, I will focus in on something a lot better. I also did a little bit of yoga. And now here I am recording this podcast. And look how calm I am. It's pretty fucking good, considering that... My computer could potentially be fucked up. Could have gotten a power spike. File system could be fucked up and corrupted. It's possible. And yet, I'm in a good mood. I'm okay. I'm calm. I'm rational. I'm evaluating myself. Number one, my friends. If you want to avoid... Avoid, if I can fucking talk. <sighs> Avoid being a femistatist. You have to be capable of self-evaluation, self-awareness, of being able to step outside of where you're at, look at your emotional responses, your actions, your inactions from a objective perspective. Diagnose where you're fucking up. Come up with a solution and then implement it. I was in a shitty mood most of the day. And I'm not saying you can never be in a shitty mood. You can be in a shitty mood. We all have the, the, the dips, right? If we didn't have dips, if there weren't times when we went to shit, mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever, we wouldn't need the ability to stand back and look at ourselves objectively, figure out what the fuck is going on, figure out what to do about it, and then do something about it. Would we? This is why... See, this is why... All of this ties together. This all ties together. In spite of all my random ranting and incoherentness and stuff, all of this philosophy, this is why I've got to write a book, all of this philosophy, it all ties together. This is why you recently heard from me on this podcast, the podcast where I talked about Southland Tales, and the character when he said, pimps, I am a pimp, and pimps do not commit suicide. And I pointed out that anarcho-capitalist, we are pimps. We do not commit suicide. Okay, and this is why pimps do not commit suicide. You've heard all of this before. Let me put it together for you. I've said all of this before, but let me put it together for you in a train of thought where you will see how this goes from point A to point B. Because normally I'm just ranting and screaming and hollering fuck you and screaming cunt and, you know, suck dick and screaming Obama, Messiah and just what the fuck ever. And I know it's hard to get through all the bullshit. Again, fuck, I have self-awareness. I fucking know when I'm ranting incoherently and when I'm not. I don't need anyone to tell me. I'm not. That's not saying you can't leave a message on the YouTubes or whatever and say, dude, that podcast was fucking incoherent. The fuck were you talking about? It's cool because you're probably right. Go back. Go back to my four-part series where I talked about how statism is based in fear. The root cause of statism is fear. 
when a statist says, who will build the roads? What the statist is actually conveying is the fact that the statist is afraid. The statist lives in a state of emotional fear that if the government does not build the roads, there will be no roads. And then the statist will not get things that he or she, to be politically correct, or it desires. My mother, in one of her emails, told me that that there are not only two genders, that there are in fact only, there are in fact 400 different genders because a college professor said so. That's my mother. That's why I am not a statist. Because the apple falls far from the tree, thank God. Thank God. I mean, the woman gave birth to me the woman put up with my shit for 18 years. You know, I get it. I love her for all that. But she is so fucking dumb. So fucking dumb. 400 fucking genders. No, people. No. But I digress. Statism arises from fear. The statist is afraid that their needs will not be met. And so the fear manifests as statism, manifest as them voting for somebody else to take care of them, for someone needing somebody else to provide for them. You know, I need somebody else to tell me what foods are nutritious. I need somebody else to tax every other people to build roads so that trucks can deliver the new iPhone so that I can have an iPhone 6. I need the government to create safe spaces so I can go to a place where I don't have to hear any opinions that are different than my opinions. The statist, the femistatist, lives in a state of fear of uncertainty. The statist and the femistatist fear uncertainty. They need to be certain that they will not hear an opinion they don't like. They need to be certain that there will be a road so that their iPhone 6 can get delivered to the Apple store. They need to be certain that people who do things they don't like will go to jail and be put into a cage. They need to be certain The differentiation between the statist and the anarcho-capitalist, they are two different species. I've said that before. I'm saying it again. There is a psychological, there is a mental, there is a brain chemistry difference between us and them. The statist does not have the ability to step outside of itself and see that its fear of uncertainty is an emotional response to something that happens to everyone on the planet every single day, every moment. And that's why they can't control it. That's why you cannot convince or persuade or educate a statist out of being a statist. They don't have the ability to self-observe. They don't have self-awareness. They are, in a sense, they're animals that don't realize they're going to die. 
right? You're talking about an animal, any animal, a cat, a dog, a cow. And oh God, someone's going to bring up the elephants and the whales and all this other stuff. We can't read the minds of elephants and whales. Elephants do apparently have some sort of concept of death. Based on observations of their behavior, keeping in mind we're a different species, looking at a different species, trying to interpret their behavior as we understand it. Right? This goes back to the argument I always make about God. When people say, well, God loves us. It's like, well, look, if God really does exist, then God is as far advanced beyond us as we are advanced beyond an amoeba. Now, an amoeba is not capable of human emotions because there's a gap there. And thus, God, if God does exist, God doesn't exist, but say God does, if there is a God, God cannot possibly be capable of human emotions such as love because God would out of necessity of what God is God would be so far beyond us statists are like animals they don't have a concept of anything beyond their immediate needs, beyond themselves. They can make plans for the future. They know they're hungry, cold, hot, wet, tired. But elephants, while they may recognize a member of their group, herd, I think herd is the correct term for a group of elephants, They may recognize a member of their herd is in danger or is in dead. They may respond to this, but they're not thinking in the way that they step outside of themselves, look at things objectively, plan for the future. And statists are the same way. Statists cannot step out of themselves look at their own emotions, their responses, their fears objectively, recognize this happens to everyone, do anything about it. The statist doesn't have that ability. We as anarcho-capitalists, we can do this. This is why we are anarcho-capitalists, because we have been able to step outside of ourselves and say, yes, look, I want some roads, and I want some motherfucking free health care, and I want free birth control, and I want, you know, I want, I want retirement, I want unemployment insurance, I want roads, I want an iPhone 6, I want all of this stuff. I want, 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 want. I want stuff. You think I don't want stuff? Do really, you, you really fucking think that? The difference is I can step outside of myself. I can look at my wants for the emotional responses they are. And I can say, whoa, whoa, motherfucker. You want a lot of stuff. But that doesn't entitle you. That doesn't give you a right that does not give you ownership over other people. That's why I understand that taxation is theft. That's why I understand that people should not need permission from another group of people to get married or to open a business, or to own a gun. And likewise, that's why I understand that other people are not mine to control, to regulate, to imprison, to kill, to tax.
We anarcho-capitalists, with the ability to step outside of ourselves and look at our emotional responses objectively, have the ability to change, there's that word, Obama used it, change, to change our state of mind, to change the way we respond to the world around us. And to understand that these things happen. And that's why we are pimps. And pimps do not commit suicide. I still need to get on the interwebs and do some research and find out if anything else has been discovered, found out about the director of the Grey State movie committing suicide. I put committing suicide in quotes because pimps don't commit suicide. And again, I wasn't there. I don't know what's... I, I could be wrong. But I just don't think he committed suicide. I don't think he killed his family. And I don't think he committed suicide. Because he may not have been an anarcho-capitalist. He may have been a right-wing minarchist. But he was close enough. Now, of course, if I were a femistatist, I wouldn't be capable of stepping outside of myself and doing these things. I'd be miserable all the time. I would still be miserable right now because my fucking computer melted down. I would be wallowing in the misery and I would be having an expectation of someone else fixing that misery for me. I would have an expectation of other people changing their behavior so as to make me happy. I would not have the ability to regulate my own emotions. I would be a femistatist. Now, the interesting thing is we're 42 minutes into this podcast and I haven't even actually started talking about what I was going to talk about. If I were a femistatist, I would blame that on the patriarchy. Patriarchy had nothing to do with it. No heterosexual white man with a job came in here to the studio where I'm at now and forced me to talk for 42 minutes building up to today's topic. What I recommend you to do, because this helped me, this could help you. Get yourself, God knows some of you are going to want to do this on your fucking cell phone or, you know, what in digital format. And if you must, I really do think there's something about actually writing things down on paper and not having to access them via technology that makes a difference. But you see, that could simply be an emotional response on my part. There could be no objective difference between accessing information on a cell phone or a computer screen versus accessing the information on a piece of paper where it's been handwritten by you instead of typed in. And again, because I'm not a femistatist, I can step back and I can observe myself from the outside and I can see that it is very possible I'm simply having an emotional response to something that isn't there. It is possible that I am misinterpreting. It's possible that I am bringing my own biases.
I have a small notebook. This thing's like two by four inches, but it's thick. Ha, that's what she said. Ah, damn. Mm, five and a half. It's four inches by five and a half inches. It's a small notebook. Spiral bound notebook. And I write stuff in here. When some, whenever I fuck something up royally, I'll write a note in here. For example, I'm going to write in here, when you think you smell something burning, look for something that's burning. Because this morning I fucked up royally. Whenever I need a burst of motivation or whenever I'm feeling stupid or whenever I'm feeling stuck, when I'm feeling like I'm in a rut, instead of blaming the patriarchy, I turn to myself for wisdom because nobody knows my life, my fuck-ups, and my successes better than I do. Nobody knows your life, your successes, your failures, your fuck-ups better than you do. Keep a journal, whatever you want to call it, of this nature. This isn't like a diary journal where you write long passages. I'm going to read to you some of the stuff out of my book here. I should have gone running. There have been times when I've thought, yeah, I should go trail running, and then for whatever reason, I didn't. I pretty much always end up regretting that. For one reason or another, it's like, God damn it, I should have gone. I've never gone trail running and been like, ah, oh, shit, man, I sure am fucking sad I went trail running. This is the worst idea ever. I've never regretted putting on the shoes, going out, getting on the trail, and going running out by the reservoir, up and down the mountains, across the rocks. Never. Never regretted it. Instead of eating, drink water and do something. I have a bad, 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 bad habit of stress eating or boredom eating. Again, Fat people refuse to step outside themselves and say, yeah, the reason I'm eating all this food is because I'm stressed. Or the reason I'm eating all this food is because I'm bored. Or the reason I'm eating all this food is because I'm having these problems in my life and this is my coping mechanism. Right? People eat as a coping mechanism. People, people do lots of... Eating is not the only coping mechanism. God help me, sometimes for me, trail running is my coping mechanism. If it hadn't have been... And actually, it wasn't that cold today, but if it hadn't been snowing and shit when my computer blew up, I probably would just put on my shoes and went running. If it would have been a nice morning outside, that's probably exactly what I would have done. Sometimes I use trail running as my coping mechanism. Things are sucking. Fuck it. Put on the running gear. Fucking go running. Cope. But when I want to eat and I realize I'm not really hungry... I'm eating as a coping mechanism. I'm eating because I'm bored or because I'm stressed out or whatever. Instead of eating food, drink a glass of water and then find something to do. Find a project. I need to clean out the kitchen cabinet. Whatever. Take out the trash. Taking out the trash isn't really a long-term project. Something will take more time than just that. Right? A good project that will take an hour. And it's amazing how suddenly I'm not thinking about food anymore. What else do I got in here? Accountability does not equal blame. Again, this is something the statist will never understand. We as anarcho-capitalists, we understand that we are accountable for what we do, but that's not the same thing as laying blame upon somebody. When you lay blame upon somebody, it's typically done in a negative way, in a negative connotation. You're trying to slough responsibility off of yourself onto someone else. Right? Somebody would say, well, you're to blame for your computer melting down. No, I am accountable for my computer melting down. It's a subtle difference, but it's the ability to understand the subtlety between those two things 
that makes you and I not femistatist fuckwads. What else do I have in here? Mm. This one's for girls. When you're talking to a girl, first make her laugh and then say something really serious. That's called frax fractionation, if I can talk. Fractionating. Fractionation. Make a joke, get her laughing, then say something serious. Or say something very serious and then crack a joke. Basically, you're causing her to go from one emotional state, a serious response, to a humorous response, or from humorous response to a serious response. Fractionating people's emotions like that, especially with women, is an effective way of getting and keeping their attention, keeping them interested in you. It also helps you as a person, if you're trying to learn some material, if you can fractionate while learning the material, if you can get yourself to go from one state to another, that will help you remember the information. These lines right here, I'm pretty sure I copied these from a book or something that I read. And it says this. Am I denying an essential fact or responsibility? Am I creating a delusional reality to support the denial? Am I deflecting my responsibility by blaming someone or something else? Say, are you a femistatist? Okay. Am I denying an essential fact or responsibility? Well, yes, as a femistatist, you are denying the fact that other people don't belong to you, and you are denying the responsibility you have to be accountable for your actions and for your responses to the actions of other people. Am I creating a delusional reality to support that denial? Yes, the femistatist creates a delusional reality. That delusional reality is called the state. Am I deflecting my responsibility by blaming someone or something else? Yes, the femistatist deflects their responsibility by blaming their inability to cope emotionally with the world around them on the patriarchy. Here's one I wrote down, only one mini pizza. Sometimes I go to old Chicago's and they have little mini pizzas. Occasionally I've had two mini pizzas and two mini pizzas always turns out to be too much. Stick with one mini pizza. Is this important? How does it support my purpose? Don't await an opening, make an opportunity. Keep your toothbrush close at hand. Don't buy the shitty frozen beef patties. I used to get these frozen beef patties at the store. They are cheap. There's a reason they're cheap. It's because they were disgusting. And yet, I'd say, oh man, these are only, this is only $2.50 and there's like 20 of them in here or some shit. And like a dumbass, I keep buying them. And so finally, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you expect that they're magically suddenly going to become higher quality beef or something? Stop it, you fucking retard. Again, I stepped outside of myself. I looked at what I was doing objectively. I identified the problem and I fucking implemented a solution. The femistatist cannot do that. When someone says, hello, stop, pause, respond. I have a bad habit. I'm out and we're walking along and say, hey, hi. You know, I was like, yeah, well, I kind of go by because I'm kind of a asshole is the technical term for it. Introverted and not always outgoing. It's like, and, and this applies to anyone, like just strangers on the street. They're walking by going, hi. Because sometimes, God, sometimes people, and maybe those of you in the big cities, you have no clue what that's like. But in smaller places, sometimes, yeah, you're walking, you just see somebody you've never seen before in your life and say, hey, how's it going? And that's to remind me 
when somebody does that to me, not to just be like, huh, okay, or whatever, and just kind of blow them off and keep walking, but slow down and maybe say, hey, it's going great. How are you today? And maybe they'll slow down. Maybe that's going really good. And maybe we'll start talking and maybe there's something we have in common. Or maybe, you know, to, to go touchy-feely, maybe the universe is telling us we need to meet each other. But if I'm just an asshole, if I don't slow down, if I just blow past people who say something to me, I'm never going to find out. Moving first gives you the advantage of surprise. Think less, act more. I'm not reading everything. I'm just... I'm Mm. Don't allow a poor state to prevent you from taking advantage of an opportunity. Change your state and take a bold step forward. Like today, I was in a shitty state. I had an opportunity to get things done. I had no computer to fuck with. I was at the house. I could be working on stuff. Instead, I was moping around like a motherfucking hurt puppy. I had to observe that my state was interfering with my productivity. I had to drop kick my ass. I had to do something about it. Here I am recording this podcast. Because I control my emotional response to the world around me. And I can do that because I am not a femistatist. And in the next episode of Anarchy Moment, I'm going to pick up where I'm leaving off right here and I'm going to start to talk about the things that this episode was supposed to be about. And you're going to understand why I'm bringing in the femistatist and the patriarchy. So this will be part one of the Anarchy Moment if I were a femistatist. And if I were a femistatist, I would, of course blame the patriarchy 